Alrighty, so guys, we're going to get started. Um, it looks like we have a decent amount of people in here. Um, I appreciate everyone coming in to support the first episode of the Prospect Series, um, brought to you by Firestick Gaming. Um, if you guys need a video, any kind of highlight tape or anything in the park, in the Pro-Am and stuff like that, hit those guys up, man. I'm telling you, they make some great content. They are just great at their job, guys. I'm telling you guys, if you need to make a highlight tape to get into the NBA 2K League, or even if you want something for the park, or if you just want some other game, Hit these guys up. Anyway, guys, we are going to get started. Today, I have a special guest with me. Um, fan of season. Um, recently, he did win the Celtics Crossover Gaming Tournament to get himself into the draft pool for Season 4 for the NBA 2K League. Um, I'd like to start out first with um, Fana just introducing himself, you know, saying, you know, how he got to this point and, you know, why he's going for the NBA 2K League. The stage is yours, Fana. Uh, yo, uh, I love to see all my boys popped out. I see a lot of my loyals in the chat. I appreciate y'all. love you, boys. Um, my name is Emmanuel Gossman. My nickname's Manny. Uh, I was originally born in Denver, Colorado, but we moved out to uh, California. So I basically grew up here, though. So I was born in Denver, but grew up in California. So I've always been a Cali baby. So um, I basically was in the Fortnite community and had a couple friends and I believe, 2K19, very end of 2K19. Uh, played a little bit of 2K. I liked it. Like, I thought I was the best, but it was in the park. So um, I got taken to the stage in the beginning of 2K20. Kind of uh, built my brand, built my name, got partnered after a couple of big wagers. Um, Pitch with over there with SSWI. Uh, basically took me under his wing, said you'd be great in Pro-Am. Like, you seem like you'd be, you're open to learning. You're very coachable. Uh, see, even though Pitch is like 40, bro, like, he's like a... <laughs> Like, Piff is, like, 40, so he knows he's not competing at a competitive level. He's still, like, just paid for all my Pro-Am slots. Any team that I believed in, he'd pay for the slots and let us compete. Like, he gave me the perfect route for um, anybody for Pro-Am. I didn't have to deal with getting snakes, nothing, bro. He always gave me a, I'm saying, just a stable home. Nobody snake, Frank, Vec, like, just so many cool last dudes who just watched me sit there and develop as a player until it was just time to, like, a branch off to the bigger names and uh, compete at the highest level, and that's what we did the other night, and now we're here. Well, it's on. Like I said, it's an honor to have you, man. I'm so happy for you. Um, the first thing we're going to start out with. Um, first of all, guys, in the chat um, later on, we are going to be doing a section where we answer questions from the chat um, relating to fantasies. And so, like I said, stay tuned. We will be reading the chat. Um, if you guys do have some questions that we can ask live on the broadcast, we will. Like I said, we'll be doing that later on. Um, but anyway, I'd like to start off with the first question. Um, so obviously, like recently, you did um, win the Celtics crossover gaming tournament. Um, I actually would like to start off this by going in and breaking down some plays by you. If that, I think that you know this this highlight tape that you have here. Obviously, it's all your good plays, but I mean, there's not many bad plays by you, in my opinion. Um, I'd like to, if you can see it clearly, I know it's a little small for your screen, but um, I will not start playing it. Clear. So I'm going to start playing it, and I'd like to break down some plays. So we're going to watch this first play right here just huh. so you guys can kind of, you know, just to show the IQ of fantasies and show that he's more than just a guy who can move his fingers. So obviously in this first play right here, you are in a pick and roll. You see obviously that the corner gets wide open. What makes, like, just explain to me, like, at what point in your mind did you know that you were going to make this pass? And, like, for a lot of people, like, you know, it's kind of, some people say it might be a predetermined read or it's a guess pass. Explain to people and kind of break down the play. We'll go back from the start, but um, I'd, like to, I'd like for you just to break down this play for the audience. All right, so um, what I do, just a personal trick of mine, is I have gotten dribbling down, like, onto a string to where... I can dribble and combo up while just looking up at the court. So what I've been working on is a lot of people have bad habits of just like sliding around in the same place. Like there's like, you could tell when somebody's a hugger and when somebody's trying to make a play. And so um, while I size up and I'm moving left and right, as you can see, I do like a, a couple curries and a long crossover 18. When you move towards the middle of the court into the corner, back in the corner, you can see him sliding up and down. And I, I usually look at that and he was doing that all game. 
And another thing is, is that uh, what Dave Fry helped me out with and what I really like, when I really like started looking at it, he was like, bro, dribble to pass. Nobody's watching the show. And if you make people stay home, you're unguardable. You'll be like, you're just like, that's when you'll be at your peak. If people watch the pick and roll and they're afraid of getting dotted, it's clipped because I don't think there's, I, there's a very select few who are guarding me in the pick and roll for four quarters and keeping me under 30. I agree. Um, so we are so, going to jump to the next play though. I'd like to jump to this okay. next play because, I, like I said, it just gets better as we go. This is a very fast-paced play. So obviously, we start again. You know, in the typical pick and roll, you don't. You know, you get a little slight screen, but on this play, you see the. I just don't know how you see this. Like, you know, obviously your teammate it, I greens a, it. I caught a two step. I caught a. I caught a. Oh, that's me. No, that's me. That's me. Mm-hmm. That's Antoine with the ball. I caught a two step from Antoine. Mm-hmm. I saw he had play badge. I told him attack middle and run a two step with me. So, so can you explain um, that to can, can you explain that two step to us? Because I actually I'd like to learn more about that. So explain to me what the two step is and how you guys run it. Okay, so um, let me start from the start. On a super another super unselfish guard who brings a good amount of attention to himself. So um, Twan Twan asked for uh, Twan had play badge. Everybody's gonna be looking at him. As you can see, we had Pex back door, so the corner couldn't help. Basically, I fake wrap to the middle, and then I dex back to the hash sides. And it's just something I, I learned out of dex uh, from Ruffles. Like, mm-hmm. as you were talking about the stage community and uh, park events, I used to win mad park events. And I run one of them is Ruffles. You have to move off ball a lot. You have to dex around screens. So um, I'm pretty good at dexing. Even in my stage, my wagers, I call off ball plays in a 3v3 court because just nobody else does it. Like some people call it like lame and you have to score off ball like look how he's trying to get it but it's iq bro so um i run that two step a lot with Tuan because he brings a lot of attention to himself as well because he's a great scorer so i knew pairing up with him for this league tournament would have been it's just perfect both of us are unselfish guards who could put the ball in the rim mm-hmm. so we are going to jump to this next play now so when we look at this next play here we'll just watch it real quick this was for the game i remember this Tell me, in that instance right there, like, just, you know, pr- like you said, this is game on the line right here, you know, this is for, you know, for, you know, to seal the game for you guys, you know, what is running through your head when these pressure situations, when, get, you know, when we're in a close, you know, neck and neck game? Oh, I live for that. You can see my boys in the, t- my boys in the chat glass badge. I live for that. When it's, when it's crunch time, I'm pulling something out of my, like, I have something under my sleeve. But right here, for instance, I know the level's high. Mm-hmm. You know this is the last possession. You see that little space that I have open? Yep. All game, I promise you, I've been shooting off of that peak. So I'm knowing it's game time. He sees I have space. He's 100% jumping. And if he doesn't jump, I would have been boxed. It would have been clipped. Mm-hmm. Any good defender is jumping at that. I just had a wide open peak, so I curried back to the middle and he jumped. Yeah, it's supposed cool, that, right? man. That, but that's a, There's a lot of clips where people jump. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, you know that you know it, it's a game changer. You know, in situations we see it constantly in the 2K league. That's a time when there's money on the line. You know, there's a million dollar prize pool. It's probably going to increase even more. But you know, with situations like that, that really just shows your character when pressure is on the line. And obviously, as you go and once you get into the league, I believe that you will be a top guard in this draft coming up. But as you get into this, you know, I think that in these pressure situations, this might, might show, you know, just a you know, relapse to what you're going to be in the league. So I do want to jump on to the next play, though. Because, like I said, you know, when it comes to these situations, you know, you just step up. So right here, obviously, you are just cooking the hell out of that guy. Yeah, that, you know, you kill. just – that's just – you know, you just – you make it look so easy. Some people might be like yeah, – some people might think that all you do is just dribble span, you know, you dribble, you know, you just span dribble moves. But the thing is, I, if I could say something for that, I have a response for that. They're like, I kind of take like personal that I, that I hear all the time. Uh, the speed glitch mm-hmm. isn't going to be in the game. The curry's not going to be in the game for all of my boys who've been watching me since 2k20. I've always been a dribbler when everybody else was just left and writing. I was using the AI size. If I wasn't using pro two, just left writing like everybody else. I was using AI, momentuming, throwing behind the backs, between the legs. Whatever the meta is, there's always going to be a meta to score. And the best guards are always going to have the same meta to score. And no guard's going to outwork me at being a better score than me. And it's that simple. I don't care what game it is, what speed glitch is gone. If there's a way to score and there's something glitchy in the game, I'm going to be doing it and I'm going to be scoring. So I like, like the confidence. I, you know, that away from me. But see, that's something that's so key. The thing is, you're going to be once you get into this league, people are going to be so hard on you. You're going to see people spamming in the chat. Oh, I could do that. You know, I could do this. You got it. Of course, but that's 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing about being a streamer. So it's, it's just like I hear it all the time. All, all you do is, oh, you use screens like the fart community. Oh, you don't know how to ISO. You do this, you do that. Which obviously, there's actually plenty of clips in here that I ISO as well. But mm-hmm. um, it's just there's always gonna be naysayers, bro. And if they if they could do something about it, they'd be on the court and not watching me. Mm-hmm. So. So we will do this one last play right here because I think the key thing that a lot of people are looking at, obviously a lot of people, I'll be honest, with your play style and your game, you're you're likely going to end up being a shooting guard. There are only four organizations that do need a point Mm -hmm. guard. That is Cavs Legion, Pistons GT, Pacers Gaming, and Heat Check Gaming. There's only four organizations that do need that point guard. So my thing is with your play style, we will break down this last play. You know, obviously you make a great pass. It's a great pass to the corner to Don. Um, I do want to break down this play a little because I think that that's something that a lot of people don't have a good trait in his, you know, his passing. A lot of people do compliment Antoine on his passing, but they're st- you know they want to see your passing too. You are a great scorer, mm-hmm. but how good is Fanta Season's passing? So right here, have... go, ahead. go ahead. I'll let you finish. So right here, obviously you you know you're you know you're doing your thing. You're cooking. There's one thing you can do is create separation from a defender, but it's using that separation to get other people open. So obviously right here, he's stepping to that corner already, kind of playing defense, but. You, you, like I said, it looks like you make that pass to the corner. Determined. I knew he was going. Mm-hmm. If so, he didn't go, I just catch the ball and reset the ball. I just catch it, reset it. It's just to keep the defenders on their toes. It's just I can't let them be comfortable with dropping out the corners. Like, mm-hmm. when when a team is front running, that's when a team is at the, at its dangerous. Mm-hmm. People are going out their body, swinging with ease, not like having people. People are swinging down. Everybody feels comfortable. Like. That's that's when it's like I'd be at my worst because I can't let anybody like I gotta keep them on their p's and q's. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Play defense. But like, anyway, you know, you try to pinch. Boom. But yeah, like I said, you know, that's something that's like another piece of your game that like I think is kind of underrated in a way, and I've been watching it, uh, is your passing. A lot of people do see the way you dribble and the way you score is very impressive. You know, constant greens. I know this is a highlight reel, but man, there's just so many greens out here. Like, you know, you, you take some ballsy shots. Like, I will say, like, I watch some of the shots you take, just a little space you give, and it's a green. It's simple as that. You know, my th- you know, like, that's just the thing about you, and I think that's special, and a lot of people need to start talking more about is fantasy season. So the, ne- the, ne- the question I want to ask you now, and this is going to be a very, very you know, tough question to answer. So with the four organizations that need guards, point guards specifically, um, Celtics Crossover Gaming, Heat Check Gaming, um, who was it, Pacers Gaming, and Pistons GT, which organization with their players do you feel that, you know, would fit you best in your play style? Well, I mean, I haven't done uh, enough homework to answer that with 100%, like, because mm-hmm. there's still four months left. And uh, like you said, I like I have a lot of things to work. Just passing. That's really it. I know I'm going to be putting the ball in the bucket regardless. But passing is something I've gotten better at, but I know I can get even better at it. So, um, but... I feel like whatever organization I really, really like, I look very ball dominant and feel like I need to be taking every shot. You can ask Antoine, anybody I played this league tournament with, I really don't care. Like, I'm here to win. I don't care if I learn, I have to learn how to, I don't care if I'm a six man and I'm teaching my point guard how to dribble because he's a better passer than me. So it's mm-hmm. like, as long as I'm there and I'm winning and whoever on the floor is capable of winning better than I am, it is what it is. But, um, Whatever, as just like you say, I take ballsy shots. I don't really look at them as ballsy because, as you can see, they're green. Like I, I don't shoot heavies all game. It's like mm-hmm. they're they're just they're they're open, and I know how to create the space like that. So, um, I agree. It's a team, a five around me that's confident in me. So it's like if I take that, it just so happens they get a lightly. You know what? Get back on D because usually yeah. that's green. It is what it is. Yeah. So my next um, my next question to you though, um, so ahead. so obviously in this draft, one of the most needed positions is shooting guard. Um, you know, uh, so how would you feel? You know, being you know, like obviously I know you you still need to do more research on the players. Um, you know a little about a couple players. Um, which shooting like which point guard would you love to play with? Like just number one guard that you would just love to play off ball with. JBM, hundred percent. JBM. I'm not gonna lie, 100%. you'd look you'd look good in a, you know in that Wizards DG jersey next to that guy Day Fry as well. Let me tell you, under Day Fry, I think I, I could see you working very well with Wizards DG. But um, let me ask you this now. So you know you're obviously kind of like I would say in my opinion a more newer name within I would say the pro M community because um, you're starting to get yourself out there mm-hmm. more. And uh, so 
what like where do we see fantasy season going in the draft as of right now? If if the draft was tomorrow, where do you feel like you belong to be drafted if drafted at all? Um to be honest, I've never really been to like just like you said cuz I've never like I like it's like the players knew like respected me, knew I could put the ball in the bucket, etc. Um I'd get picked up every time in tens or whatever it is. So it's like I always I always knew like the players knew, but and the not not the right people knew. So in my head, I was kind of just like before all the tournament. So I never thought in a million years I'd get this much attention off of just like mm-hmm. one one tournament. Because like like what you're seeing is just like what I do. Like I mean, my passing was on point. Like in that tournament, I just felt unstoppable. Everything was like super easy to me. Like it, it's this is like it's what I do. Like mm-hmm. well, regardless. But yeah. um. I think I should go. I think I'd go somewhere in the first round. Where if that's me speaking for myself, mm-hmm. I know there's a lot of other great point guards. I know there, but me thinking about the potential I have and at the pace I'm learning how to how to pass and uh, and feel out feel for the game. And uh, my defense is great as well. I play from the West Coast. It's like I, I still play the half. Oh yeah, defense, that's a good so. point. That's a good point too. Yeah, you know, a I, lot of people. Everything do- I'm doing is delayed. So if I'm on timing and I'm actually like feeling smooth. <laughs> I, the sky's the limit for especially my offense and my defense. Mm-hmm. So um, I swing well. I communicate 24-7. Um, I keep my team calm if we're in, like, the game's just, like, a lot of bullshit's going on. Um, I try to keep us composed. If you, if anybody watches a series back, you see like, things start to get right. I'm like, okay, okay, you know, we, we knew this is going to happen. The game's going to bullshit us. But, like, come on, let's mm-hmm. lock in. We can't do anything about it. We're in this situation. Now let's get out of it. Mm-hmm. Well, one thing I do want to point out too, and um, real quick, guys, I want to pull out the Celtics crossover gaming bracket. So um, we saw in this bracket, you know, it was you know, you guys didn't lose a single game. You guys started. Let, 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 let's start from the beginning because it, it's just it's amazing to me the fact that you guys didn't lose a single game. So you go in the first round against a team called Jordan Crew, a team that's no a li- not saying one of the best teams in pro, but they definitely have won a lot in the past. Uh, they're they play one of those. Every day. They're nice. Yes, yes, yeah. those guys are nice. They're not a bad team, and you two owe them. You give them the broom and tell them get out the way. Then next round you jump against Seldom and Bloodlust and all those guys. You two owe them. Then you go against C's Esports. You know you say another two owe, and then you go against oh. The OGs of, you know, the pro community, effortless talent, you 2 them. Then you go to the finals, and you 3 0 doubt it. So, like, like I don't know, like, explain to me how this, like, how this all happened. Like, I don't understand. Like, how the heck do you just clean sweep it? 11-0. And next thing I want to say is, you know, your numbers are 16.6 points per game. Obviously, you've got 3.2 assists a game. You have around, you know, 1.6 turnovers a game, which is a very low rate of turnovers for anyone who has the ball in their hands. You're shooting 66%, and your three-point percentage in the tournament was 63.6. All very impressive numbers within, you know, a competitive scene for anybody. So exp- explain to me, like, how the heck you did this? Um, 100% it's because... Like you just said, like you can see, even in that game winner, I got the ball with three seconds left. With like Tuan was trying to cook up that whole possession, couldn't get anything going. And I, I told them coming into this tournament, Tuan, you do your thing. I will be your shooting guard. I have no problem with this. If you're going crazy, go crazy. But um, just don't have me be here for no reason. If there's three seconds left, four seconds left, trust that I will get you a bucket. And in a lot of these clips, uh, I get a bucket with three seconds left. Uh, I move off ball well. I take a lot of pressure off of my guard. I make his job really easy because he got a lot of threes off the hash just from his uh, the middle pinch of me. Um, but to be honest, I just got to give that up to Tuan because it's you can't focus on both of us that hard at the same time. Because mm-hmm. when you have just two guards who can score at an elite level, Tuan a better passer than me, but he could still like score like not as good as me, but good enough to win a game by himself. He could play with the sharp. So when you have two people on the court like that, we're on the same page. We're calling plays for each other to score the ball. I'm calling pass back DPs for him and last shot. Just keep – we don't give them the same look. Like when a team's looking at a guard who moves this way, then you just have some stage guard dribbling like a crackhead out of nowhere, and he goes for a quick 15, three after three after three. Then I give the ball to Tuan, and you're used to swinging, and Tuan dots you. It's just – it's not much you could do because it's just it's – just pick your poison. So I, I got I to gotta give that up to Tuan for that. Um mm-hmm. 
of playing by time. So the next step I want to go into is um, basically I want to come from I want to see the chat what kind of questions we can get from this chat now. So everybody in the chat, you know, I know a lot of my guy, you know, a lot of fanness guys are in here. Obviously, some of our loyals from ESGN 2K are in here. I need to see some of you guys, you know, what you know, give Fana a tough question. Nothing easy, guys. Nothing easy. We need some tough questions for Fana. Uh, make sure you guys just write in the chat. And as we're waiting for that, um, I am going to ask you one thing. It, it, out of any NBA player right now, currently, you know, currently or before, past, whatever, uh, who would you say represents your game the best? You know, like, who are you the – your play style, who is it most like in the NBA? James Harden, 100%. James Harden? So you got – so let me ask you this. If, if you're going to say James Harden, do you have defense like James Harden? Um, I like I I mean he improved on his defense. Mm -hmm. Oh, but honestly, if it, we're talking about the video game, I'd say James Harden that can play defense. I play in the stage. I play against the best of the best every day. The people who move the best. I talk a lot. I rotate, and I'm doing it all delayed. Mm -hmm. Um, if I if I'm playing not, not delayed, I can't imagine how my defense or offense is. And just like James Harden, if you don't throw two three people at him, put all your attention on him, he's giving you thirty or forty. It's just that. And I have that type of confidence when it comes to scoring. Because if a defense isn't, like, throwing everything at me, I'm going to put the ball in the orange. So um, it makes a lot of my reads you can see in these clips. I never had to make any intense reads. I didn't have to predetermine any rotations. It's just easy, like, easy reads because you have to sell out that hard or I'm scoring the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, the first person who presented me to you, and like I said, I've watched you in the past, but someone who's really been talking about you a lot is that Day Fry guy. Can you tell, talk about your relationship with Day Fry? Um, I feel like at my level for my level of respect for Day Fry kind of just skyrocketed. It was just one night we're playing tense, and um, I pass out of a shot, and the ball all the way to the opposite corner, open us on sixty forty. So, um. It was like a sin. Day Fry was so disappointed. He was like, oh, no, 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 no. Take it off instantly. Maybe take it off um, 100%. You get into the league. You're depending on openness. It's going to be a shit show. Turn it off. Learn how to pass. We're all here to get better. Like, have some pride. <laughs> so um, it's been off for the past month. I told him give me two weeks without openness, and I was going to be looking great. And I think he was genuinely proud to see me just dominating in this tournament, making the right reads, like, I just looked untouchable, and that's all thanks to him, to be honest. But I think um, him just seeing me from the improval, I told him, give me two weeks, and I worked on it effortlessly. I, I watched a little bit of film of people, even draft tents, past broadcasts on my stream, shit that doesn't matter. Watch film on how power forwards are playing me, um, how people pinch, how people move. And then I was, like, just thinking about what he kept saying. It was just the one quote that stuck in my head was, Dribble the ball just to pass. Like he said, that's what Jack does. Jack's the best in the world. He'll mess a dude up just because he knows somebody's going to move and he's going to make that pass. So um, I studied like all the passes I could have been making and everybody kind of pinches me and drops in that same type of way. And that's why you call it a guess dot predetermined, but it is what it is. I know you're going because if you don't, I'm, I'm scoring and nobody's going to watch that. Nobody wants to watch a stage guard go to work. 100%. So um, there are a couple of um, questions in the chat. Um, I do want to jump in the chat real quick and read some of these questions. Um, so, like, one question that's being asked. So once you make the NBA 2K League, um, you see it with a lot of guys who were previous content creators, you know, they get into the league, they have to focus a lot of their time on playing the game. Like, uh -huh. so how are you going to still generate content, you know, the type of content into the level that you do while you're in the league? Um, we definitely, we definitely miss out on like the daytime wagers against other content creators and stuff. Mm -hmm. Cause I'm pretty sure you can't wager in the league. Nope. Um, uh, um, other than that, it's really just like my loyals, they want to see me do great. They know I love Pro-Am. They're gonna, they're gonna be watching me play Pro-Am. Um, they, they, so it's the late night streams. I talk to my stream when I've had like all my loyals in there. Anything besides my loyals, like, it is what it is. If you watch me just because I'm wagering your favorite content creator, then it's like, you know I'm saying, mm -hmm. I appreciate you. I appreciate the support, but I really care about my loyals. It's the solid 400 to 300 that are there every night, regardless of what I'm doing. So, um, I, I just stream at night or in the morning. I talk to, or I try to talk to my coach, whatever it is, because to a certain extent, um, besides learning your passing and et cetera, after I was talking to Splash about it, saying um 
you could really talk to your coach if there's there's only so much like when it comes to 2k it's like you're, you're only given a certain amount of animations once you master those animations you've already scrimmed the same team this x amount of time uh just talk to your coach figure something out and if you're if you need more improvement if you're not doing your job when it matters like on the court during your game then you're going to be practicing more those that's those streaming hours that i gave you instead of practicing then you, you're not doing that no more but mm -hmm. he said he was succeeding he was winning and he figured something out with his coach and i would be hopefully look something uh similar to do with my coach and if, if not it is what it is i knew what i signed up for and i'll just stream at night okay so we have a qu another question from Zeno 2 k in the chat. He asks, Fano, what advice would you give to someone that's starting from nothing that wants to be in your position? Um, I've told people this all the time. The quickest way you want to grow, the, the, the quickest way you want to grow is being a competitive player. Regardless of who you know, how you know, how you act. There's, pre there's people with like... Like, sorry for cursing, shitty personalities. Just mm -hmm. awful. Oh, you're not wrong about if that they one. Were, they were, if they were terrible at the game, not a soul would care about them. So, um, regardless of what it is, if you're if you're one of the best at the game, you put the time in to be one of the best, you're going to have eyes on you. You're going to draw attention. If you're playing the comp stage every day and you're being everybody's favorite streamer, people are going to see, oh, this is a guy who dropped off, blah, blah, blah. The other, and they're going to come and they're, they'll come and watch. They'll see if you're nice. Mm -hmm. But, um... Just don't be humble. Don't burn unnecessary bridges. Like there's a lot of like, even coming into the the 2K community from Fortnite, I had like the maturity just from like IRL experiences of just how to deal with people, how to market yourself. And a lot of these kids have no idea how to market themselves. Don't burn <laughs> unnecessary bridges. Drop your little ego. Like if you're playing for coins all day, you're winning. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to brag and ah, uh, uh, you spin the blocks and get like, bro, you're not. Nobody cares, bro. Because at the end of the day. I'm getting paid to lose, and you're sitting there trying your life out and burning an unnecessary bridge. Nice guy. You do great, you do, I'll host you. Like, I'll show you love, and other people will show you that same type of love because it was showed to me like that way when I was coming up. Mm -hmm. but, um, Just be humble, to be honest. Have a good personality, be likable, and be good at the game, and you'll build a community if you put enough energy into it. So the next question we're going to ask from the chat is the class badge. Fana, if any team was in here that was interested in you and how – and how would you impact a team that doesn't have a great team caliber? Not really. uh, repeat that one more time. Um, it says, Fana, if any team was in here and that was interested in you, and how, mm -hmm. uh, and how, a little, we need a little work on that grammar, but um, <laughs> um, how would you impact a team that doesn't have a great team caliber? So I think basically the question is like, okay. so, so you does not sue. How would you turn a team around who's yeah. been losing? Yep. Um, a thousand percent. I think I'm capable to do that. Um, I'm. I strongly believe your relationship with your teammates off the court, because well, I've seen it IRL with like IRL teammates. Like AAU, I played AAU my whole life, and up until my senior year, I traveled. If your teammate are like this, if you guys are tight, and they're genuinely happy to see you do something on the court and improve, like the, the sky's the limit, bro. Like the energy when everybody's yelling. That's so why I love playing with. Uh, not Dave for awkward. I pick mm -hmm. awkward up for all my wages. I don't care if he was the second to best, like the best. Like he's a great lock. That energy that he gives you, like that, just makes you like you're on top of the world, bro. You do something right, you're screaming. He's yes, sir. This is why you're the best. Like just like it just nobody like you can't replicate that type of energy. So I feel like I bring that type of energy as well. Mm -hmm. Super hyped. Uh, I hold my teammates accountable, but not in an extremely toxic way, unless it's very repetitive and I know they could do better. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel like I'm I could just be a franchise player to where I bring so much attention to me that I can make somebody mediocre look great. The simple fact that their job will be a lot easier with me on the court. I'm open to learning. I'm open to listening. Anything that my teammate sees, they could talk to me about. Anything a coach sees and wants to watch film with me and teach me, I'm open to look. I'm just very open minded. I don't care if I have to learn how to play power forward because I tru I truly believe your point guard you can play anything in the game. Mm -hmm. So um whatever I'm needed at shooting guard power forward whatever it is I I'm open to learning and I'll be one of the best at it I like that I like that my last question to you um, obviously we have a little more we have a little more we need to talk about but so we've seen in the past in the NBA 2k league there's been a lot of I would say toxic locker rooms where you know you had situations where players weren't getting along and obviously 
it, during this COVID season, it wasn't like you could just go away from each other. You guys basically lived together for six uh-huh. months, and you had to hash out those problems. So if you were in a locker room, you know, where would like let's say that it, the problem wasn't directly with you, but you were outside the problem with, between two, two teammates who were not seeing eye to eye. How would you handle the situation? And you know, how, do you feel that oh. you know? Go ahead. That's something. That's something I'm amazing at. Um, I haven't done it in exactly like a locker room setting, but I have plenty of people in this stream who can vouch. Just content creators bash their heads over this. I'm very understanding. Um, I can kind of give you guys a more soft, like, and gentle, like, I can reword it to where it's like kind of show what each other is trying to like tell each other, except not as aggressive as they're going at it. I'm really good at being a middle person at a common situation down or like figuring out what's wrong and trying to give them a solution in the middle that doesn't involve you guys screaming like children. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, that's something I hundred percent would be great at a thousand percent. If the problem was with me, um, I really don't take things to offense, but it's just, I'm, I'm big on respect. As long as it's never taken off the game. Uh, like that's like, as any man can like ask for, as long as it's not taken off the game and super disrespectful IRL, I'm not. I don't care, bro. Like, I'm, we're all here to get better and win. So, so, um, so have you played any sports in your past? That pretty well. Have you played any sports in yeah, your past? I played my entire life. My entire life. Played basketball. Uh, I played. I played basketball my entire life. Yeah. Okay. So you. So you already uh, I was have that. Good. Uh, I was undersized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What pos- What position? Point guard or shooting guard? Yeah. Yeah. I played. I played point, both. Both. Just like the game. Mm-hmm. Point guard or shooting guard. Whatever. It's, it's something um, with those I was positions. A great sport. Well, well, that's one yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. we've seen very common in the NBA 2K League is we have a lot of guys who are past, you know, D1. You know, we have some D1 athletes who played baseball, basketball. You know, their careers didn't work out in basketball. Like, you know, whether you were undersized or some tragic injury happened, we're seeing a lot of guys that are getting into this league that have that sports background, and it's proving to be very vital and help a lot of these guys transition into the NBA 2K League. So for anybody who's in the chat, of course, you know, you see Fantasy season. He's looking very good so far, you know, coming into this draft. But if you guys feel that, like, you know, that you have what it takes, you know, try this out, especially if you have a sports background. I promise you guys it helps a lot. And, you know, a lot of this, you know, obviously this past year with COVID, we didn't get on the stage, but – when it comes to us, you know, you're speaking and vocalizing to your teammates, it's the same thing as when you're at a regular basketball game. So obviously I know 100%. a lot. And I think that, 100%. Mm-hmm. so I think that as time goes on, you know, like obviously um, Pro-Am is growing, you know, you're just seeing guys, you know, that come from the park community and the stage community transition over to this so they can make that what they do and what they love a profession is amazing to me and I love it. So, you know, my question to you, you know, where do you see yourself long term with this, you know? Um, do you think that this is going to be something that you do for a short bit, or do you think it's going to be long term? Um, as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love the game. I love the competitiveness. That's why I. That's why I stayed. I'm doing super well streaming right now. Mm-hmm. So like, if even even without the 2K League worst case scenario, I'd be okay just with content creating when it comes to um. Money is it, but it's nothing about money. I dead love pro am. Like I love the competitiveness, especially if it was in the two K league playing the best of the best on a stage, yelling back and forth at each other. I love it, and that's why um I made that tweet. I think I think if you run the page, you saw. I think oh, you yeah. said, did you see this on ESGN? Somebody said I'd be rattled if mm. uh, boys were yelling on a stage. I'd like I, yeah, like, actually I mm-hmm, yeah I'd like to hear that from that. That rubbed me a wrong way because mm-hmm. I played AU my entire life. And nothing is more intense than a team, a team that you don't know in a different state. You guys meet in a different state. You're both there to win. They're running an aggressive full court press. It's like contact. People are yelling. People are clapping in your face. Like no, no, no man on a video game can rattle me. I don't care who you are. I don't care how you scream, how loud you scream, how big you are. Like mm-hmm. that's, there's no, I promise you, you're not bigger than the six, four people screaming in my face, clapping your hand, they're clapping their hands. Like. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, and this will be the last question of the night. To all those people that are doubting you, don't believe in you, all those people who are your haters, your naysayers, they say, or someone that says you might use a Zen or whatever's going on, what will you say to them oh, when I you make the NBA 2K? Mm-hmm. So let, um, let, let me ask you this. What are you going to say to them? Uh, last year, there was a lot of people saying uh post draft because i was on i wasn't honestly i wasn't i didn't find like a program where i fit in nicely i was playing with crowning them for a little bit it just wasn't working out um uh 
A lot of people were calling. They're trying to make fun of me. Tier two guard, tier three guard. Uh, you're not making the two K league. Give up. Blah 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 blah. And they're just trying to disrespect me. But um, it's just funny because it's like I knew for a fact what I put my mind to. I'm going to do, and um, that's what I'm doing. And there's really not much to say to the naysayers because when they call Zen, I show the hand cam. I show mm -hmm. people playing like I dead. I'll turn around like this and show people <laughs> my hands, and I'll green the same. I, I, I'll green the same shots and the chat will sit there in awe. And I feel like that's what like kind of makes it because I kind of bring humor into it to proving the naysayers wrong because it really doesn't affect me in the long run. It's just going to look dumb at the end of the day. And um, I believe the sky's the limit, honestly. Mm -hmm. And the people saying I couldn't make the league, my haters, whatever it is, even if that's all in the in the league, that's in the league. If it's a coach that just doesn't think that this kid will get it done, they'll just when they're loading up against me for the money and I've improved, like I said, I would, if I fall, like I better get, get if some, they're going to regret it. aren't I, they? Yeah. Humbly speaking, if I fall and somehow land on a soup team, it's going to be trouble. So I believe I can turn a team around. If anybody does need help a thousand percent, I don't think that that's my body, but I just know that I'll put my wholeheartedly like attention into it. Like I'll put all my effort into it. I'm open to learning, and I feel like I could 100% um, turn a team's like winning around uh, just with everything that I bring. Mm -hmm. so, um, if they don't believe that and they let me fall and I somehow land on a team that's already established and doing super well, I think it's going to be trouble. Yeah, you just sparked one more question. I know I keep asking, but I promise you this is the last one. What is this going to mean to your family? Um, they love it. I'm doing, I'm doing everything that I said I would do. Love it. Um. <laughs> Just from the staying up too late past bedtime, <laughs> like since I was a kid, um, finishing high school and saying I'm not going to college, uh, they, they like content creating. It's like, um, I'm getting, I'm like, everything that I said I was going to do, I'm doing, and it's at the highest level, and it's a blessing. I always thank my loyals. I talk to my fans all the time, like, yo, I talk to my fellow content creators, like, yo. Oh, we're getting paid to play video games and we're getting paid more than people who have gone to college for four years to invest in what they want to do in life mm -hmm. more than that just being funny in front of a bunch of viewers running ads and so it's just like it's a blessing a thousand percent it's a blessing my mom's so happy um i'm putting this is the first bunch of money that i've gotten and so um i'm gonna i'm paying for a surgery she's always wanted her whole life before anything so it's it's just like my happy super like she's so proud of me and um it's the least I could do is just pay for super expensive surgery that she's never been able to get done. So mm -hmm. it's like I'm excited, bro. And listen, I don't plan on stopping anytime soon. I'm so excited for you, and I you know that right there, guys, is so motivating. I honestly, you know, I want to I want to see nothing but the best for you, Fana. I do believe that you are one of the best guards coming up in this draft. This is coming from a guy that you know I helped you know with drafting a team in the NBA 2K League, and I've seen talent come you know in and out throughout the league in the years. And I'm telling you, you guys have to watch out for Fana season. He's definitely someone that should go high in the draft. And if you let him draft, I mean, if you let him drop in this draft, all I'm gonna say humbly, as Fana season said. You guys are going to kind of regret it. I'm telling you guys, watch out for this guy right here. Um, is there any socials or anything, you know, anywhere that, you know, if there are any scouts or head coaches in the chat right now, um, where can they reach you at? You know, where can they watch your games? Um, you can watch my games on Twitch. I stream everything I do uh, pretty much. My Twitch is just Fanta. Um, I can, hold on. I'll type in the chat one second. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, you know, for and for just all, Fanta, if just Fanta on Twitch, um, my YouTube is Fanta Season. My Twitter is Fanta Season. F A N T A S Z N. Um, that's basically it. It's mm -hmm. you. You'll find me. I promise. I'm not hard to find. Um, yeah. Well, trust me. Never talk about anything. Then. Yeah, of course. And yeah. like I said, you know, this guy, you know, you've been grinding. You've been working hard. You obviously have a fan base, and you know, it's amazing to get paid off of something that you love. And like, you know, like your story yeah. is going to be very inspirational. And I love that, you know, that you know what you told, you know, your what this means to your family. That really, you know, goes that goes really far with a lot of organizations when they see stuff like that. So anyway, guys, I really appreciate you guys watching the prospect series. I really do appreciate having fantasies on the first episode. Um, it's definitely something that we're going to continue to do. It's 
bring on more guys as the draft pool gets bigger. Um, there's some tournaments going on right now. Um, the Grizz Gaming registration is going to be um, from the November 4th to November 8th. Make sure if you guys get your boys together, sign up for that. This is really a dream come true. And if you guys like this, ESGN is a network to pretty much promote people to get them, you know, get their name out there so more people talk about them. But also, I want to thank our sponsor, um, Firestick Gaming. They are an amazing group of guys over there. Um, they help create um, highlight reels for guys within the pro community. So um, when N NBA 2K League scouts and GMs can check that out. Um, they also make stuff for Park as well, you know, Call of Duty, etc. You name it. Those guys are great at what they do. They're a video editing company. They, they do a great job. Make sure you guys go check them out. Um, but anyway, I really appreciate you, Fanta, being on here. Um, I appreciate everyone in the chat. Make sure you guys spam W in the chat for my guy, Fanta Season, man. I really appreciate him on here. But um, I'm going to let you get to it. I know that you got to get back to your grind, man. And I really appreciate having you on the Prospect Series for the ESGN. Of course, anytime. Thank you so much for having me. Was it real or just pretend? Tell me why do you wanna end? Was he really just a friend? No sign of you at all. Just pictures on these walls, reminding me of how you go. Was it real or just pretend? Tell me why you 